uh, Machu Picchu. You know, Machu Picchu is a um, it's one of the wonders of the world, to say the least. Um, something you definitely should go see. I would, if you able, uh, it's almost spiritual. Get out there. It's a cool little uh, trip to take for sure. Uh, one thing that you want to be conscious of is the altitude. I mean, I know people will go to Peru and be like, I ain't even about to mess with that Machu Picchu thing because they just heard about it and be like, I'm good. <laughs> but, uh, you know, went out there, had a tight crew. Uh, you know, everyone played their parts perfectly. You know, we had a translator. You know, we had security, we had philanthropy, we had navigation. You know, I'm security. That's all I don't worry about. I stand in the back. You know, if you know anything about, you know, a wolf pack, <laughs> I understand. So, uh, let's say we fly. So when you fly out there, you fly straight into Cusco. Cusco is um, super high. Like the elevation is up there. It's like two miles plus up in the sky. So... I mean, if you want to put that in perspective, I think Colorado, like Denver, might be half of that. So just understand, it's like the atmosphere pressing down in your head. So, you know, but whatever. So what I did was I did my research before I even came. I mean, I got folks brief me, you know, had understanding little things, places to go with it what they expect, this, this, and that. So when I got off the plane, first thing, landing Cusco, um, I seen the little ladies outside when they got my good old uh, coca leaf candy. I wasn't playing. I mean, it ain't no drug. Whatever. I ain't, I ain't about to get into that either. But coca leaf candy, yes. <laughs> um, so did that. Uh, you know, I knew I could get the hats and I could get the candy off of it. Mm. Got that off the plane. Probably the best price I've seen it the whole time I was there anyway. And I went in everywhere. So when you get there, the altitude thing is a big issue. So you need to acclimate. So what we did was we went, um, well, we didn't go to where we were staying right away. What we did was we did a little tour. You visit some of the villages and stuff. And for me, what I'm doing is understanding um, really the industry and what's going on, what y'all got, what y'all uh, exporting, uh, what makes the most sense, what's uh, your, what, what's your, what's your culture? What are you trying to do? And maybe I could facilitate that. It could be a win, win, win for everybody. So we, they already usually have like the drivers want to take you to their people so they can get paid. So, I mean, it's a whole big thing. It's just that's what tourism is everywhere around the world for the most part. I mean, they're going to take you somewhere where they're going to get a cut out of whatever you do when you go there. But just know you're getting charged as an American four times easy what it should cost. So just keep that in mind. I see it's, um, in Spanish is pasto, the witch. Okay. The witch is here. Oh, this is the, cute. This is the oh, lunch. Okay. And the lunch is the alpacas and the lambs. Can you, you take mama? pictures? Yeah, this is for me. No problem. This is a picture, no problem. Dime, no problem. Sí. Another big thing to know is always know what the currency exchange rate is whenever you land somewhere. That's not going to tell you the whole story, but what does tell you the whole story is how much their living expenses and stuff is. So then you can start to, um, you, you, you can put it with other things so you understand, okay, this is what we're doing. You know, how much you, how much it costs for you to, you, you, how much is your rent? You know, how much is a typical day of eating food? You know, how much should it cost? Simple stuff. You, you'll figure it out. Um, so we went to a village, uh, we got to see the alpaca, 
the llamas, how they actually do the uh, they do the colors and everything. It's all natural. Um, after that, we go to soft flats, and that's hundreds of years, if not thousands of years old. But when you really think about the soft flats, or it's a soft flat because it's no hydration. Yeah, y'all don't know what that is right there. Oh man, so the closer you get to that edge, your feet, your ears get tighter. That's that cocaína. That's the flu. So all the white stuff is salt. That's that Peruvia right there, y'all. I don't know nothing about that Peruvia. Everything is dehydrated. You gotta drink more water. Everything. I'm already popping candy. I'm probably on candy number two. By then, this might be two hours and an hour and a half into the trip. You know, so even people in my 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 group started to get sick, you know, and uh, because of the altitude. So we kind of have to facilitate it and move accordingly as far as that go. But we still, you know, they weren't, you know, in the way, uh, you know, like that. But it was just one of those things, like you want to make sure everybody good. So what we did was we left the soft flats and they got cool stuff there that you could see you know different flavors they got the smoky stuff that i didn't get that i should have got but whatever because i figured i could get it anywhere and i really could have when i was there but whatever you learn it i don't I'm, I'm even like that in the mall i walk through the mall and see stuff and i bow on the way back to my car just rule of thumb especially you go to potomac mills crazy but um so we leave there, we go to this little restaurant. And I know my man getting a cut because he ain't no more restaurants around here. So he must knew somebody for us to even stop there in the first place. Cool though. I ain't tripping about nobody getting their paper. Let's go in there. Nobody in there. We got the restaurant to ourselves. But you know, I'm looking at the menu, you, you know, farm place. You, I can get by or whatever, but uh, I ended up, you know, like what y'all do here. So they were like the alpaca. That's what I came there to see anyway. So uh, I ate some delicious alpaca. Hey, the cute little animal, but I'm gonna tell you, he tastes. Mmm. <laughs> Multibella. Uh, so we, uh, ate that, you know, came back and, um, one of my, uh, group members was sick. So we kind of, you know, made sure that they were all right and everything. And, um, you know, then we actually got a first hand on how it really goes down. So we're in the restaurant and, um, they bring us they start bringing out you know the coca tea stuff and all that so this is the actual real leaf in there and if you got any total altitude sickness you know they got like some ammonia or something they do and might put it on your forehead i ain't really do all of that but i mean i seen it and i don't really know how much it helped but the altitude thing is just a uh, this is a thing along this whole trip so this is what you would definitely want to be prepared for don't be scared just take the coca leaf candy you be just fine it ain't even gonna come back when you have to take a pee test for your job as soon as you drop you land back you know don't worry don't worry everybody at your job do cocaine anyway trust me so um when we uh so we got there, we left and we went down in altitude to uh, the Sacred Valley, to uh, the Sacred Valley. So that's where we went to go acclimate So because it's a little lower. So we wouldn't suffer so much sickness. But at this point, where we from, what, D.C., what, 24 feet above sea level? Where I'm from, Norfolk, Virginia, is like 
four feet above sea level like that joint basically underwater so we used to being at sea level so now we way up here so we going to feel the effect to some effect it just is what it is but um real cool place like a little towny place we stayed in a decent uh little hotel but we weren't doing much there so there's no reason to stay in you know the the w or four seasons here because they probably don't even got one We got to get up real early in the morning to go to Machu Picchu. So we get up, crack of dawn, not even. We get up at like 3, 30, 4 in the morning because my navigator is a stickler for time. <laughs> Let's just say that. So we, uh, you know, we're usually a good amount of time earlier than we need to be which is great you know not you know characteristic of our people at all so we we get out and uh we walk down they pack up like a little bag lunches ready for us at the hotel real warm place they got the coca leaf tea in the lobby you know you drink and get as much as you need because they know you need it because you're not from around here and you're only hurting yourself if you're not going to do it so cool uh we get down there and, um, you know, we uh, we get to the train maybe about half a mile down the street or something like that. And it's a whole bunch of people trying to get on the train. But we got like this, uh, this we got like a special car. So we're in uh, the 360 car. So you can see all the way around. So it's glass on the top, glass on the side. So when you ride through the valley, you know, it's real scenic, you know, because you're riding along the um, the Inca Trail. So this Inca Trail thing, people are taking this three-day Inca Trail. And, uh, I mean, it looks cool. It looks real fun. I would love to do it. I don't think I was with a prepared group to go. But either or, we're going to go back and do it. You know, that'll be season two, Naked and Afraid style. With my people, we put something together. We out here. It's about to head up to Machu Picchu. That's right. Out this thing. Oh, man, man. we strapped up short. Yeah. Man, that is bad. We got my man, we got our guy with us. We all Gucci. See you on the other side. We all strapped up. And one of the things that uh, I think a lot of people uh, should know is that you're going to have all of the seasons in one day when you're in a place like this and probably because the altitude is so high. And um, what happened was when we got there, it was pretty cold. So we were strapped up, but we pretty much layered up. You got all your clothes that you got with you on you. Cool. So we started the hike and it was funny because the altitude set in right away because everyone's kind of acclimated but you're still in that element so i mean it wasn't it wasn't too many steps before people start getting winded and we're walking up right so it's like all right so you see him he just turned like one or two corners and he's turned around like all right everybody okay you know, so everybody soldiered up though, so it was cool. But you get up there, and uh, we were hired in the clouds. So you're actually hired in the clouds. He said, uh, as the sun comes out and heats things up, the clouds are going to start to dissipate. So, I mean, in a matter of minutes, we went from not really being able to see this thing until it opening up and being the most, the clearest, most beautiful thing. And we got so many great pictures i mean but um you know we actually went up there and got the history so you learn quite a bit about machu picchu and uh, what the folks were doing there you know how you know they actually had guest houses and you know you had bedrooms and all kinds of cool stuff in there and you could see like the different classes of people from certain vantage point where they would be working these would be workers and these would be nobles and stuff like that so it was it was pretty cool we got back on the train 
And instead of us going back to the Sacred Valley, we go back to Cusco. Cusco is the highest altitude, I believe, outside of the salt flats. But we stand in a hotel in Cusco. So we take like a couple hour train ride back. And you start to feel the elevation again. Um, at this point, you know, you think you acclimated, but uh, once you get to Cusco, which is higher than Machu Picchu, you realize that you're not. <laughs> and you have to do it all over again, pretty much. So what happened to me, uh, I woke up, we went and did dinner and everything. We got there pretty late and uh, we did dinner and we get back up in the, the rooms and kind of chill out. And uh, maybe around 10 o'clock, we did dinner, did a late dinner cause we got in late. And uh, I woke up about one in the morning looking for my candy, right? Cause I could feel like somebody standing on my chest, my head was shrinking. So I'm like, damn, you know, so I'm like a fiend right now. I'm like, I need this, I need candy or tea or something. I went and uh, I knocked on a couple of my folks' doors. I knew it was, you know, I ain't try to startle them or bang on too much, but uh, nobody woke up and I wasn't tripping. So I went down to the lobby and they had everything you need. They had everything from candy to tea leaves to uh, oxygen cans. I mean, you name it. They had everything that you need. So, I mean, that tell you enough about the whole coca leaf thing while you're there. So, just be prepared. Uh, by the next morning, I'm good. You know, I woke up, worked out uh, in the morning. You know, got everything together. We had an awesome breakfast. The hotel breakfast was crazy. Um, everybody kind of got down and. Uh, we just went and enjoyed the city of Cusco. Uh, 